Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Hey, and welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. My name is Jane Atkinson, and today we are talking about upgrading your style for the stage. Now, I'm a little nervous, but I'm also loving this topic because I have some of my own curiosities about what a speaker might do to upgrade their image. Um, (laughs) That's coming from a place of need for myself. So now, please know that if you're completely happy with your style and you feel comfortable, we're not trying to change that. Um, Before we go down the path, though, of style, I want to give you just a brief little advertisement. Today's podcast is brought to you by Accelerate Live 2019. That is our live event. It's happening in Fort Myers, Florida, February 22 and 23. Check out our show notes, which are available over at speakerlauncher.com. Click on the podcast and you will see the most recent podcast. What we're putting together for you for um, Florida in February is a roster of experts that I just think it's going to be epic. We've got Kelly Swanson coming back again to do a deep dive on storytelling. We've got Phil Gerbyshek going to be talking about social media and LinkedIn. We've got Neen James sharing her unique process for turning your IP, your intellectual process, proper <laughs> your intellectual property into profits and also i've asked her to stay on and talk about systems because she is a system girl i really think that the program is going to be just an abundance of information that's going to be able to take you from here to here so go on over to speakerlauncher.com click on our live events button and you'll see the show notes and uh you'll see Accelerate Live 2017. So I'm going to be back in a minute with Anne Morrissey. All right, we're back, everybody. The topic of today's podcast is Upgrade Your Style for Today's Stage. And Anne Morrissey has agreed to talk to us. Welcome, Anne. Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so right out of... Sorry, right out of the chute, we need to just clarify that if someone is happy with their style, they can just listen. Maybe they'll, they'll there might be one or two tweaks that they might want to make. And, uh, you know, that's okay, is it not? Of course that's okay. We're not here to make anybody feel bad about their current style or anything like that at all. We're here to give you a different perspective on putting yourself together, how you might um, do things a little differently and then have a better result. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm going to try my darndest not to feel bad because that closet going on behind you, my clothes wouldn't even be allowed to come into that closet. (laughs) Not really a style, a fashion used to here. So let me, let me just read everybody your uh, bio. Okay. With 12 years of experience in the high-powered world of fashion and style consulting, Anne is on a mission to help men and women, this is for you two men, uh, build wardrobes that work so that they can stop stressing about what to wear and show up in a way that says they are polished, professional, and in control in today's competitive environment. Besides being a personal stylist, Anne is also a sought-after speaker, corporate trainer, and author. She shows people how to make the most of what they've got, which is what I really love. You're not trying to change people. She teaches her clients how to succeed in a world where time is sparse, impressions count more than ever, and your image can make or break you. So, Anne, how important is a speaker's image uh, when they step onto a stage? I'd say, well, you know, if you're asking a personal stylist, I'm going to say it's pretty important, but (laughs) it is important. It's everything because people are judging you before you even even open your mouth. Right. As speakers, we have to realize that we're practicing the speech and we're trying to get all that down. But then when you get on the stage, your audience has nothing to do but look at you and listen to you. And if you have not... If, you, if your appearance isn't, has been an afterthought, 
say. Say you're just so busy doing everything else that it, that it takes to get up there, and then you don't really think about what you're going to wear and how you're going to put it together. Right. Then there could there is a high potential of a disconnect because you might be talking about um, no matter what you're talking about. What if you're talking about leadership or something like that, and and leaders need to command a presence. Leaders need to command a presence, and if you show up frumpy, or um, just sort of disorganized mm -hmm. or, or even, or maybe, maybe even not that, but just dated. Let's say you haven't done anything to the speaker wardrobe for a while. Okay. okay. One time it was perfect. You loved it, but right. you've been busy and you haven't gotten around to it. Then, then you want to think about that because, because that's what your people, if you, if you are outdated, then people think your ideas are outdated. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It doesn't have to be true, but that's the perception. Okay. One time I saw Brene Brown do a TED Talk, and she was wearing a denim jacket, and she rocked that denim jacket. And I thought, hmm, that's very interesting. You know, part of my own style is kind of authentic, comfortable. <laughs> So talk about how you can integrate your own personal ideas into, into what we're talking about. All right. First, let me say that you can be stylish and comfortable at the same time. The two are not mutually exclusive. Okay. Right? And, people, and that, I mean, just let that sink in for a second, because so many people, when I'm in their closets, they, they say that comfort is driving their style. And I get it because we all want to be comfortable, mm -hmm. and, but it doesn't mean that you have to go all the way down to, yeah, sweat, just, just really super, super comfy. We're not going to show up in sweatpants and no. uh, what have you. Although I will say today it's uh, business on the top, party on the bottom for me. You know, I've got my, I got my big fuzzy slippers on and my stretchy <laughs> workout gear going on down below. But that's the beauty of working at home, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, it, yes, it is. So to the second part of your question, um, which was what? Let's see. So how, you know, you want to wear a jean jacket on stage and that's kind of your comfort zone and you feel like you can rock it. What do you think? All right. Here's where I want, where I'd like everyone to start. When I work with my private clients, when I get to their house, one of the first things that I say is, so how do you want to show up? Give me three words, three mm -hmm. adjectives to, to let's, that's how you get it started. Because people think that their style starts at the store. Let's go shopping or right. something. But if you, but that's backwards. First, that's you need to know how you want to show up. So let's say what might one say, Pro, um, polished, professional, and in control. That's okay. a look. Okay. There are certain clothes that are going to be polished, professional, and in control. and okay. give you that image. And there are certain clothes that will not. Right, a jean jacket. That's funny you bring that up because I have two two very different jean jackets in my pile over here to, to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. But um, so, or you might say stylish, uh, sophisticated, and sassy. I don't know. There's so many words that you could come up with, right? But you want to you want to first define your image, what you're going for. Okay. What, what do you want people to think when they see you? And that is huge because most people don't really think that way. They just get dressed and they right. go without necessarily thinking what it looks like to and, the viewer. And that's really our whole point for doing this podcast is to just bring it from wherever it is in the back of your mind into the forefront to be thinking about how do I want to show up? I think that if that's all you get out of today's podcast, then great. <laughs> that's the that's the first thing. Right? All right. How do you how do you want to show up? And the second one is how do you want to feel? Okay. Right? Because clothing is really powerful. It's and certain. it has the ability to make you feel like a million bucks mm -hmm. or the ability to make you feel like you should try harder. Okay. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> just you know, not good. Right. And so so those are the things that you want to kind of get a, a hold on. You say, I want to feel fabulous. I want to feel like I'm winning. I want to feel like um, what you fill in your own blank. 
But these are the things that you want to get um, your, your, to focus on. And it's funny because once you start focusing on these things, you will see, you'll, you'll go to your own closet and you'll say, huh, um, I don't know what I was thinking when I got that. <laughs> or, <laughs> or what am I thinking? <laughs> Who was I being? Yeah, yeah. Who was I being? Right. Who was I being when I picked up that mess? <laughs> okay. All right. So where do we start? What's the first thing that we want to think about? The first thing that you want to think about, well, th those are the first things. Mm. How do you want to show up? Three describing words. You can give more, you can give five, but not too many. Sure. Right? How do you want to feel? Mm -hmm. And then and then you get the answers to those questions. Once you know that, you're going to go to your closet. All right. And so you might want to do a little thing like, okay, everybody, take a deep breath, close your eyes, and think about your closet for a minute. Mm -hmm. What's in there? <laughs> How does it make you feel when you open the doors and stand there? Right? Is it stressful? Mm -hmm. Is does it make you happy? Where just what's going on in your closet? Yep. That's the question. Okay, open your eyes. Now we're gonna do the love it or leave it test. And that is what and, and this sounds so simple, but it is so serious. <laughs> okay. For every item in your closet, you ask yourself three questions. One, do I love it? Um, and love, love can come in a lot of different ways. You know, some, a lot of men in particular don't think of loving their clothes. Right. Don't think of that. And sometimes women don't either. But you want, when you get something, you want to, when you put on something that you love, the energy of that, like, comes up and out and through. Feels good. It's a yeah. whole different thing. That, oh, yeah. that's so bad. I, I got it on sale. You know. That's a whole different energy. So you want so number one, you want to love it. Mm -hmm. you, you it does it fit and flatter you. And fit, fit and flatter. flatter you. That's you good. Want. Fit does not just mean you can get it on or get into it. For those of us who keep changing sizes all the time, fit and flatter is two really important words. Yeah. So Not just get it on, but does it look good on you? Yeah. Yeah. And three, does it add to the image you want to portray? Hmm. You've already decided that image. Now, does what you have in your closet, this particular item, you've got to go to your closet and do this item by item for everything. Mm -hmm. Shoes, jewelry, all of it. And so the three questions are, do I love it? Does it fit and flatter me? Does it add to the image I want to portray? If, does it add to the image? Does it work for your life now? Right. Right. Does it, what if I'm waiting for this pair of pants for me to fit back into them? Should I just turf them? So wait, I didn't finish the last part of the talk. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, um, so the, 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 after you ask yourself those questions, mm -hmm. if you can answer yes to all three, you can okay. keep it. If not, toss it. Okay. Um, because, and you know, uh, or unless you can get it altered to fit better, that's the one exception. Or okay. since so people have sentimental items that, that they're, that are in their closet, which I say, get those, that's fine to keep those, but that shouldn't be taking up any room in your closet. Cause the goal is for you to be able to go to your closet and to say, Oh, I love everything in here. It fits me. It looks good on me. So that way, can you, can you just think about that for a second? That's, that's um, what you would be, how you would feel if that were the case. So you, there's nothing in, bad in there. There's nothing that doesn't make you look like a million bucks. It's just not there. Wow. Right, right. So, so yeah, that's the goal. This makes me want to just go and get rid of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad? Well, no, but you know, no, a lot of, and a lot of people say that. Yeah, and, but but the, the let me back up for a second. The reason that we're talking about this, you know, I I work with all different kinds of people from all different kinds of backgrounds, not just people. All right. Um, but as a speaker, you know, I want you to think of your wardrobe as a power tool. Yeah, it's not just clothes in there. These are your 
what these are your tools to make you look like you are credible mm-hmm. and to, to back up your words. It just, it just backs it up. So, so when you look at your clothing as power tools and you are the product and the way you put yourself together from head to toe is your packaging, then you start to look at the things in your closet a little differently. Okay. So you said you had some stuff sitting beside you there to show us things. Are you going to show us the do's and the do nots? No. Okay. What are you going to show us? Let's see. Um, The third thing is that clothing um, has its, uh, you you want to understand the energy and language of clothing. Okay. Every piece of clothing speaks something and you want to be aware aware of what it is. Okay. So so let's see. Before I I start with that, I'll start with this because I'll I'll forget this. Okay. Okay. Well, there's lots of stuff here. (laughs) Okay. So. What would be the energy of somebody wearing this? This is a gray sweater, gray button down. Does this a a woman wearing this? Woman. I got this from a woman's closet. And the the outfit was, the rest of it was gray pants. Well, I'm thinking not super duper. No. but, But the energy is drab and low and tired. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it? Okay. Sure. If this is in your closet, don't feel bad. If it makes you feel, if it fits and flatters you and it makes you feel all these things, then we're not trying to make anybody wrong. Well, it's not about that. Yeah. It's not about being wrong. It's about, because have you ever heard about anybody talk about the energy of clothing before? No, but I love that idea. No, right. So it's just things that, that, um, that I like to share which is one of the reasons that I like to speak because people don't think of it this way. Okay. And if they did, that's when a whole new thing opens up. Let's do um, a men's shirt here. Whoops. Okay. Uh, tie for men or no tie for men? <clears throat> I didn't want to really get into that level of detail because everybody speaks about different things. Right? Energy is more important than... Sorry, it depends, right? Now, okay. what is the energy of this men's shirt? Okay. How much you can see versus this? Which energy is higher? Uh, I'm going to pick the... Well, I don't know. The one on the left looks a little casual, but I'm not sure if it's translating. It's drab. Yeah. Yeah, it's very drab. It's hard, it makes it hard to see right here. A little less polished is my... A lot less polished. If you can see it in person, yeah. what you can see that one is kind of tired and the other one is crisp and sharp. Okay, crisp and sharp. Okay, so men wear something that makes you feel crisp and sharp. And I would say tie or no tie depends on where you're speaking and what would fly with them and what you feel comfortable in. I have lots of clients who never, ever would ever put on a tie and that's okay. That's a part of their image. That is a part of it. Crisp and sharp. But if that is, if that's part of your, of your definition that you come up with. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so some people, so, so you've got your definition and now we're working on the energy of, of your pieces. Okay. The pieces are, if you, if you wanted to be, Sophistic. If your one of your words were sophisticated, you would not be caught dead in this. Okay. Yes. Because it would not be possible. Right. Right. The, and and a piece of clothing has to have the capacity to make you look good already in it, or nothing is going to happen when you put it on. Okay. But it is not possible to look good in this this little shirt. Okay. <laughs> so it's just, it's not. It's not going to do anything. I got. Thing is color. Yes. Color is what I like to say. Color is energy made visible. And let me show you what I mean. And, and, and just, uh, I forgot to say this, Anne, but just in case somebody's driving in their car listening to this, I want them to know to come on over to speakerlauncher.com and click on the podcast and you can actually watch this. We're doing a visual podcast on this. So Anne Morrissey, uh, I want to m- make sure you come and actually view the video. So you can listen to it once, but then come on over and see the actual visuals so that uh, I can describe them to you as well. Okay, continue. Well, to, to talk about this without seeing it, right? So check yeah. it. Okay, so 
anybody can wear any color somewhere on their body. But okay. it's the color that you wear up by your face that you really want to get right. Because okay. face is the focus. Okay. You're, watching, you're, you're looking at your face. They're looking at all of you, but it's first that. Okay. So, for example, I do not wear gray up by my face. Okay. I see. And I think we can see why. Yeah. Nothing, and it washes me out, right? Nothing put on here. But if I put on red. Mm. And that's a beautiful shade. That just so looks right? good. You see the difference? And I wanted to uh, note that the minute I saw you face to face, I remembered you. You were memorable. You've been memorable to me since the moment that we met. Wow. And I have a bad memory, so I wasn't exactly sure where. But you are, have an incredibly memorable look about you. And that's what we want as speakers, right? That's what you want. So you, you, you do. You want mm -hmm. to be... It's, it's not about whether you're beautiful or young or slim or any of that. That is not what we're talking about. It's about what have you done with what you've got. Okay. You want to take everything that you, you want to dress. Um, your, a lot of people have a way of dressing flaws first, right? They're not happy about their stomach. They're not happy about their neck. They're not happy about their arms. They're not happy. You know how that goes. And so I have people try to cover these things up. Okay. And so, and when you're looking in the mirror, that's what they're trying to do. Whether they are conscious of it or unconscious of it, that, that's how it, some people, that's what I call flaws first. Okay. Facing that way has no power. You want to find out, you have to look at yourself honestly and go, hey, what am I, what's good about me? What, 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 what are my positive traits? Okay. And you dress to that. Let those come out. And um, hmm. it's, just a, it's just a much better way to, uh, to approach it. Okay. I love it. So fabulous first instead of flaws first. <laughs> right. What's fabulous about you? Okay. Great. I love Don't it. say your smile or something like that. Pick something, you know, like maybe, yeah. Oh, some, okay. Pick, pick, pick something, uh, great legs, um, great hair, great, what, whatever it is. And you just, you just <laughs> want to aim you, what you want to do is you want to aim for the top of your range. But everybody has a range of what they can do with themselves. You can need, there's the least you can do with yourself and there's the most you can do with yourself. Okay. So when you're speaking, my personal opinion is that you do the most with yourself. In other words, it's just paying attention to all your details. All right. I'm thinking back to my red jacket that I missed. <laughs> and uh, it's too hot now that I'm 54. It's too hot to wear. It was a red leather jacket and it made me feel really good. A, it won't fit anymore. And B, it'll be too hot for this age. So what do women do who are having trouble with uh, hot flashes and things like that? Get it taken care of. Okay. Do, I mean, just do it. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no need to suffer through that. I'm in that exact same my stage myself, but I said I can't be bothered with this. You, there is help for that, and you and you need to go get it. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm, honestly, I've tried the natural way now for a couple of years, and I'm done. I'm like, okay, I'm going for the drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and there's there's a lot that can be done about that. I don't have those anymore at all. I mean, I, what am I going to be in the dressing room with somebody going? Yeah, all, yeah, all the time, you know, and it, yeah. it, it, right, it affects everything that you're going to wear. But when you get it evened out, you will be so happy. Well, I, I suspect there are some people who have tried lots of things and they're still struggling with it. So they may not be able to dress quite as heavily. They need to figure out their best version of themselves in lighter clothing. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and how do you think that, that whole thing was here in, in Florida and Miami? Oh, yeah. flashes in my arms. <laughs> <laughs> what about um? What about uh, the sleeveless idea? If that would that be? A, it depends as well. I I think that um, clothing without lining is really what you want, right? Okay. And clothing that doesn't show show sweat. Okay. Right. So in other words, so if you're going to wear a, a, a top, then it needs to be in a, a, a sleeveless or any top, 
Mm -hmm. um, but especially sleeveless. If, if under the arms, it needs to go low enough so that if you sweat, it's not going to, you're not going to see it. Okay. That's, that's really what I think helps the most is you might be sweating and, and flashing, but if, if it's not showing through your clothes, you can play it off. Okay. All right. All <laughs> right. right. Because the you, you can be, you know, it can be cold and you have a hot flash. Yeah. I have a lot of clients who are young and beautiful and they can pull off a sleeveless dress like that. And so I know it's possible. It just would never be me. <laughs> and neither would a dress. A dress would never be me. Either. No? No, it's just, no, it's just a non-starter. Neither would heels. I'm just, it's not my thing. <laughs> and you know what? And it doesn't have to be. And so, so when you feel most like you, that, you know, then um, that's when you come across most authentically. If you put me in something gray with flats, I don't think I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what would happen, but, but um, that's interesting. I just don't think I'd be able to do it. No, you're really making me think about colors, though. Uh, somebody gave me a little card once that said what colors I should wear, and I, I think I rarely ever refer to that card. And the reds and the things that you've been showing are on it. Um, and here, so, so I the choose for today, I'm like black and gray. <laughs> this is like, I, didn't, I gave it zero thought. That's my point, Anne. I gave it zero thought. Okay, so which, <laughs> which is what a lot of people do. Yeah. But as you're speaking... You don't want to do that. You want to decide what it's going to be, what's going to, what's your power outfit. When I speak, I can even think of creating the talk. I, well, you know, it's, it's already created, but I, I have to um, know where I'm going to be speaking. Then I figure out what I'm going to wear. Then I practice. Okay. Good. I mean, that might sound weird to some people, but I, I need to know how I'm going to show up. All right. You, you've said there's a difference between just wearing clothes and being dressed. Dress. Aim for dress. Let me show you a picture here. All right. All right. This is a perfect picture. Okay. There's, there's several here. So let's try to get it right so that you guys can see this. All right. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Women? Okay. These women are all what? Just wearing clothes. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. There's yes. no effort has gone into this at all. Okay. okay. Now, this one is going to, when she's dressed, looks like this. Wow, see, she's like oh. shining. She's shining in a very different way. In a very different way, hiding and then shining. This one here wants to be taken seriously in the music business. All right. Oh boy. So she? her style is going to be different if she's in the music business. Well, I mean, yeah, but as a but but this, whatever it is, yeah, <laughs> it not show up like that. Yeah, and uh oh, all right. Well, I can't show you her. I lost her. Oh, there she is. The Take other half. Time. <laughs> the other half of her was on a different page. Okay. Now, oh, that's sharp. That's a big dramatic. Uh, hang on, uh, move your before out a little bit. Oh, I guess that's the two pages. Okay, fair enough. Yes, yeah, two fair pages. Enough. I'm trying Beautiful. to get even there. Okay, she looks what fantastic. I see the difference between uh, the before. Right. And and so will the audience. This one. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah. Okay, so look at this. This girl. Okay. Cash. Very. Sp okay. Yeah, they're really like, uh, the, what I'm seeing is that people just feel different when they're wearing these clothes. That must be what it means to that is exactly what it means. versus yeah. wearing clothes. Right. So, well, right. Because when, like, I just moved this weekend, right? Okay. And um, so that was a lot of work. I hired, hired movers and all of that. And, uh, but still it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of work. And even though I don't have much junk, I still had things so wow what am i what am i gonna wear i don't have exercise clothes for this because i don't have any clothes that are crap i just i don't have them right because i <laughs> why would i have that so i'm walking around in my exercise clothes and i don't feel right mm -hmm. I, even though i'm moving then i had to go into a subway and get a sandwich and, and I, but i noticed that that's what everybody else is really doing they're just jeans and t-shirts and sweats it's not ingrained in you but, but, but however um, I, I felt so good today when I could just 
Right? When the move is over, this is and you. Then now I feel like myself again. Yeah, this it's, is you. It's not something that you can understand unless you go through it. Yeah. Right? How powerful the clothing is to make you feel like you're, um, like, I tell people a lot of times, you have, you just have, if you've never done this, you have no idea how good you can look. Hmm. Most people really don't have any idea until you do something like, you know, like this and, and just aim for the top of your range. Just assume that there's more that, that could happen. And what will happen is your audience will automatically think differently about you. Hmm. They will hear you in a, in a different way and follow your instruction more likely than they would if you just didn't pay attention to if, if your appearance was an afterthought. I think that's the. Okay. So what we're really trying to express is just bring it to the forefront. Honestly, I did this podcast as much for me as for anybody. I have a cottage uniform that I wear from April until October. And that is t-shirt shorts and flip-flops. And so I think what you're making me think about is, well, maybe if I'm going to do Zoom calls all day long with my clients, I at least dress from the top up in a way that I would want them to take me seriously and maybe not be distracted by what I am wearing and have it lower their idea of, you know, because sharp is something that I really do want to show up as. I want to show up as mentally sharp, but I think I'm not necessarily thinking about physically sharp at the same time, but sharp is a word for me for sure. Okay, great. Then when you're the next time you're, you're, so color is going to be, if you're on zoom calls, Mm -hmm. the color is huge. You, you, you could just remember this. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Right. As opposed to this. Yeah. So yeah. I, I kind of just even droop, right? So <laughs> do is that. And then accessories are really important too. Okay. Um, because they just. Yeah. You see. I see what you're saying. Now, it's not the same thing. So so uh, that's what I mean by the details. Okay. And, and everybody's going to have different details and I'm not here to tell them what they should be because I'm not looking at them. No. But, um, but I, I know that when you, when you have your whole outfit planned, um, you, I think that there's a confidence in that and, and you, it's planned and you know that it's right. Yeah. And you know that it's right. You are playing and you know that it's right. You, you're not nervous anymore. Well, maybe it's not. It's like your speech. We really don't want to wing it. And I think that that's kind of the place that I come from is just really uh, winging it. Um, there was someone who said they didn't want to use the feature on Zoom that's called, in the video settings, there's a little thing that says, touch up my appearance. And they didn't want to use that for authenticity purposes. I've and never seen that. I say bring it on, like give me that button. So under your um, under your video button, you've actually got video settings underneath where you choose which video you're going to use. And in there, there's a little button called touch up my appearance. And it's a beautiful thing. And I have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know that. Okay. Um, I have no problem clicking the button because I've seen the alternative. Uh, I've tried to record in QuickTime too. And it, so uh, I know lighting is really important when you're going to be on video and on camera. Is there anything else that we should be thinking of when we're just kind of working from the waist up? I know you're doing a lot of webinars now. Um, I think your background is pretty important. Okay, so let's talk about your background because it looks to me like you have the closet to die for. Talk about that a little bit. So I, this is a uh, eight, eight foot by eight foot vinyl background. Mm. You can't even really probably see all of it. There's a chandelier. There's you know all kinds of things in this closet, and I didn't want to be in just an office because I wanted to take it up a little higher. Right, as a stylist. You know, get the picture of what I'm talking about. So I ordered this from 
mm, it's a strange name. Stickers Banners, I think. Stickersbanners.com, something like that. Okay, we'll put it in the show notes. Thank you. Okay. And um, and you can upload anything that you want behind you. And um, it's something that, believe me, as I was moving yesterday, I said, this thing better go up to last night because I'm not going to fool with this. Right. It's, it's, it, I haven't um, taken it up and down very often. I just like to leave it up. But, but uh, I think your background says a lot. Even if you don't go to that extent, make sure that it's neat and that it's, in, that it's interesting. And that um, be, because people are judging you once again. Right. Um, what's all that stuff they've got over there? What's yeah, I have some clients who have a big old mess going on behind them. It's like they look like the nutty professor or something with just stacks and stacks of books and just chaos. And I think, oh boy, that's look, you think what? You think something, you don't, it's, and it's not positive. Yeah, no. It makes you feel like they are confused. They're not together. So what we can probably control is color and the background and the lighting and things like yeah. that. And we have a really great day here, so I, I suspect that uh, um, we're not doing a great job of it uh, to model. But you, I love your background. And the minute I saw this behind you, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly how you should be showing up. Like, how cool is it that she has an office in her closet? I love it. <laughs> But if I touched it, which I won't, because it's a little yeah, it, it would it would move. Like that's not even really a door. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not a door. That's that's in the background. Part of the thing. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I love it. Well, it just goes to show that you can kind of create whatever image that you'd really like to create. And um, I think for me, the big message is just bring it more into the forefront. Let's think about it a little bit more. Let's think about our colors a little bit more. And the style that we really want to come to. You've made me want to go in and just toss everything out of my closet, really, frankly. <laughs> oh, that happens a lot. And then what I would say to you is, what are you doing with a closet full of clothes that you don't love, that don't necessarily fit, that don't add to the, your image that you want to portray? Yeah. Right? So my it's, closet it's- is a whole bedroom. I mean, it, we turned a bedroom into a walk-in closet. And most people could wow. have like something to die for in there. And I just have something that I just toss things in on the floor and I don't even think about it. So I really need to get in there and get the dust off everything and get rid of it all and start over again. Building a wardrobe that I love. I love. I'm not great at uh, choosing things that I end up loving long term. Like I have a ratio of about one in every four items I buy do I love, love, love. Do you go to the store and try them on or do you buy them online? No, I go to the store. Okay. Well, the love it or leave it art test applies to things that you buy as well as things that you have in your closet. Sure. So, okay. Do I love it? And I see people say, oh, it's such a great color. I said, yeah, but it doesn't fit you. <laughs> That's a no. Oh, but it's, a, it's a, you know, it's, um, I love it, but it, it, it's, it's not really me. It's not, it's not right for this, you know, for maybe it was me 10 years ago. Sure. Right. So it's, it's all of those things and you got to be ruthless with it because if you don't really love it when you buy it, how do you think you're going to feel about it in six months? Right. Right. It's okay. Right. If you don't, if so, you want to raise your buying standard, not necessarily to be more expensive, but to just be uh, more attractive, just to, to think about, just think about it. and, and yeah, because it, and it pays off. Mm-hmm. So when you shop, I don't shop online. I can't handle it. I, I mean, but why would I anyway? I need, I'm always at the mall. So you go and touch it. You need to you need to feel it. How does it feel? You want something that feels good again? Oh, All of the sensory yeah. things. And if it doesn't fit, and this is um, this is for men and women, mm-hmm. there's something called alterations that yeah. happen in your life. Okay. And so you don't think that there's something wrong with you or the way that you're shaped. You, you can know that um, a tailor can take something and make it right. wonderful for you. Okay. Very good. So if somebody wanted to work with you, what would the options be? There are... Um, how do so they get started, I should say? How do you get started? Well, I, I have a, what I call a Focus 45. All right. <laughs> if you're here, of course, I come to your house. But if you're not, 
then the focus 45 is the time for you to get all your questions asked. You know, I, I can actually look in your closet virtually. You can show me pictures of outfits, say right. three or four outfits that you would use for speaking. Okay. Um, uh, I will make recommendations for you and absolute and and be real with you because uh-huh. this, is what, this is what it takes. You need somebody that's going to be real and that knows no not that but this. Okay, good. So I'll tell you what to do and where to go to get it. Oh. Yeah, it's helpful to have a coach in all all areas of your life, really, because sometimes you're a little clouded in your own judgments and you can get too close to things. Right. And yet, so, so it's a, it's a 45 minutes and it's uh-huh. um, two ninety nine. Okay. And wow. That's cheap. If okay. You go to my website, morrisseystyle.com. Morrisseystyle.com. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to put that my in. website for women. Okay. And sharpdressman.club is the website for men. And uh-huh. just email me and we'll set it up. The awesome. second way is, um, I have a done for you VIP Miami style experience where, <laughs> wow. where you come here and in two to three days, I do all the shopping for you for your speakers, wardrobe or whatever, whatever it is. That you oh decide. my goodness. This and is then, awesome. I'm a busy speaker. We, we take, um, then the last part of that is to do a book of outfits. That's where I take this blazer and this top and this skirt, these shoes, these earrings, this bag, all of that, take pictures of it. Over and over and over again, so that you are good no matter what. Super cool. And that is that kind of depends on um, that. That takes a conversation to see how many folks. But all right, very good. Well, this is very exciting, Anne. And um, I have a conversation that I'm going to have with you when we get offline about maybe bringing you as an in-house stylist into one of my events. That might be cool. Florida. So we'll talk offline about that. Hey, everybody, uh, wealthy speakers, if you have enjoyed this conversation, I hopefully you're thinking about things a little bit differently and looking at your wardrobe from just a little bit slightly different perspective. Um, please let us know. Give it, drop me a line, Jane at speakerlauncher.com, and let me know if you have appreciated it. And thank you so much for your time. You are so welcome. And with that, we will say, see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now, everyone. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Speakers Show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free Wealthy Speaker audit. And visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, Wealthy Speakers.